welcome to the Earthworks Podcast, where our team will share the jargon of carbon from many of our turf friends from the past 30 years. Hi, everybody. I'm Joel Simmons, and I am here in the infamous Earthworks studio with a friend from many years. I don't even know when we met. 20, no, 30 years ago, 19... Uh, 90, 90, 90 91. Yeah, uh, Rick Prock is the, uh, I have to read this, the Director of Estimations and Logistics for Labar Golf and Irrigation. He is an irrigation specialist. He is a former superintendent, assistant superintendent. And we met in the early 90s uh, when you were flinging chicken shit uh, at Fiddler's Elbow. And the famous story <laughs> is that he still wants to sue me for chicken shit at doses. And, and there's a story behind that, I'm sure. I mean, my favorite is, I first, you first said this, I think we were in New England. And, and you walk by, I'm at a trade show booth, and you walk by and you scream as I'm walking, as I'm talking to a bunch of clients, you're saying, don't pay any attention to him. I'm suing him for chicken shit at doses. That's right. So yeah. you threw a lot of, uh, that was 545 five back then. In uh, when it, it, at times, I mean, there was <laughs> there was some, some, there was, there was some, ups. some different numbers sometimes yeah. depending on the, yeah. the batch that was there's, made. There's a or mismatch, right? So <laughs> there's I forgot that. I, thanks for reminding me. Uh, there was a store. Fiddler's Elbow was our very first uh, account, very first mm -hmm. real golf course, and you worked for our friend Tom Briner, yeah. who's been here on the podcast mm -hmm. uh, and a dear friend uh, of many, many years. I mean, I, I owe a lot to Tom and to you because uh, you guys taught me. I didn't even know what you know direction you hit the ball on. I didn't know what a tee box yeah, was. That was. I that didn't was, know what a ball washer was. I didn't know anything when I first came to Fiddler's Elbow. Outright cold call for you, right? Uh, well, no, actually, what well, what happened was Tom uh, knew some of the people that we worked that we rented our office from in Martin's Creek because oh. he he was living in that area and he was going to the same church. Yeah. So one of the guys at the um, at the office said, "Hey, I have this friend who works on a golf course." And at the time when I first started going there, he was just an assistant; he wasn't a superintendent. Right. Um, for Eric. For Eric. Eric Case. Eric Case was still, yeah. I couldn't get Eric's name in my head. I I ran into Eric not long ago oh, wow. uh, in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if he's still uh, still there, but um, but yeah, it was before the forest, the third course was even built when I first mm -hmm. uh, started working with you guys. And I, I'm pretty sure you were there when I first came on board. Oh, yeah. uh, and so I didn't know anything. And so I'll tell this story because you were there at the time, but it's a story I tell in academies all the time. <laughs> But uh, we, we, I think the first experience, Tom, you know, I don't think Eric really had any great interest in anything we were doing, but Tom was interested in what we were talking exactly. about and, and building soils. And it was, it was a hot uh, July day, much like it is today in, in New Jersey. And uh, he put out 545 on, I don't even, it was one of the holes on the meadow, maybe it was one of those parallel holes. And he put out that on one of the holes. And I'm sure you probably had to do with the application. Most likely. And and, uh, yeah. and then he calls me and says, uh, and I, I don't know what to expect. I mean, I'm working with Jerry Brunetti, who you know well, mm -hmm. and um, and and worked with his sons. Uh, and, uh, and, and I'm just kind of a young punk kid that doesn't know anything about business, doesn't really know what I'm doing. And this is one of our first applications ever. And Tom calls me up and he says, you got to get out here. I'm like, why? What happened? What's wrong? I mean, is there a problem? Is there fire? Is there damage? Is there somebody dead? Is, you know, did, did Rick really get a, a cancer from this? I mean, it's all these things going through my head and I got out there and he gets me in the cart and, and we drive up to where he had applied the one fairway. And he says to me, um, yeah, look, and I'm like, okay, well, there's no dead animals. I, I I don't know what the hell I'm looking at. And he goes, it's the only fairway standing tall and 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 not wilting and purple. Right. Everything else around, I mean, it was bone dry and it was hot. And uh, and you know, and and I again don't know what to expect. So uh, you know, so I'm driving there the 20 minutes completely thinking that my whole company and everything I've invested in, everything I've done for the last five years is mm -hmm. gone. And I get out there and it's like. Oh, well, thank God. And then you you both were standing there and goes, oh, look at this. This is really quite impressive. And uh, so at that point, I was convinced that I'm going to become an instant millionaire, millionaire which mm -hmm. still hasn't quite happened yet after 35 years. Close. One of these days. Uh, and then we thought that this would be great. And uh, I don't know if you know the rest of the story, but we took it up to uh, Fox Hollow next door and to, to see Tim. Uh, and um, 
and Tim puts it out and I call him up thinking now I'm a little cocky. And I said, so how's it, how does it look? And he goes, I, I didn't notice anything. I'm like, what do you mean you didn't? Tom I said, da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. So that's when Jerry came to me and said, we've got to look at soil tests. We've got to understand what we're dealing with. So we ran the soil tests for you guys and they were okay. And we ran them for Tim next door and they were not so okay. They were really bad. He needed a lot of calcium. And and if you remember when you guys built the forest, remember how bad that calcium was? And we begged Eric to put some limestone down there. Mm -hmm. Uh, I remember walking on that property and, um, and literally getting mud stuck to the bottom of my shoe. I mean, oh, yeah. this thick because mm-hmm. the calcium levels were so bad uh, and it was a mess. But you you were the one. So back in those days, uh, our products were not prilled. I mean, we've gone through lots of gyrations, but you were the poor schmuck. I mean, the guy that, that got to spread all this stuff. So how bad was it? I mean, it was up to your neck. No, it was no. Yes, it was. You could be honest. It was horrible. It was disgusting. It stank. And you were covered with crap and uh, literally chicken shit and up, up to your neck every time you had well, to put I, it I up. just remember the, the winters running, putting on two layers of Carhartts and running <laughs> running the Han top dresser up and down the fairways with, with two tons of your stuff in there, just, oh, just top dressing the fairways. Yeah. And then, but the result was, you know, yeah, you, saw, you it, saw it in the summertime. And the rest, yeah. I mean, we learned, I, I can't tell you how grateful I am to have had you and Tom uh, as my mentors in the golf course industry because I didn't know anything. I mean, it was just, you know, I mean, there were people that called me. I remember some, I won't mention any names, but I I got a call from a very famous golf course superintendent. I say, this guy called me and Tom says, he called you? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Like I'm thinking, you know, why? There was a problem that I do something wrong. He goes, he called you? And and so, and I end up going and visiting with him and, um, and I, you know, got up, you know, kind of started my career and mm-hmm. it was kind of, you know, and Tom was there, you know, every step of the way, but I had forgotten what every time, you know, this was young. I mean, we were young as a business and they were, the plants were, you know, sometimes they messed up and they actually started calling you guys directly. They didn't even call me the, my plant would call you guys directly and yep. say, Hey, we tried to make some five, four, five, but we don't know what it is. You guys went, yeah, sure. Bring it over. And uh, we had an issue one time, I mean, this was devastating to me. I mean, it was one of the worst things that happened in my professional career where uh, they spiked a 545 and it turned out to be about a 10. It was almost double. Mm-hmm. And uh, you guys got a lot of it. And and I was actually on my honeymoon and uh, I was I was getting calls and saying, things are burning up and it's, you know, it's July, it's hot, it's 2X the uh, rate that, you know, it's supposed to be and everybody's putting it out at a five and it's really a 10. Uh, and by the time I got to you guys, I w- knew what it was. And he goes, oh, oh, well, that's cool. And you started applying it at the proper rate. And Tom said, this is one of the best products you've ever made. Mm-hmm. So 1025 was born ah. from what you guys were doing uh, at Fiddler's Elbow. So yeah. um, as is my habit, I do all the talking on these podcasts with a guest sitting next to me, actually. So talk about, let's go back through your history. Um, I don't even know where you went to school. You went to Rutgers. You didn't go to Rutgers. I don't know where you went to school. I've known well, you for I, I initially years. I initially went to Syracuse thinking, oh, that's right. thinking I, I was going to be an architect. Uh, didn't quite work out. And uh, a started, structural architect? Yeah, yeah. Building architect. And uh, January of 86, uh, school asked me to take some time off. The school asked you to? school asked me to take some time off. And so I went back to Fiddler's full time working for Dave McGee. Okay. And that's when I was general manager. Well, he was super at the time, right? Uh, Was he general manager by that time? He think he had just taken the GM job. GM job, yeah. Was had he ever been superintendent there? Oh yeah, I worked. Yeah, for, at, yeah. So he was started out at the superintendent. Yeah, 84, 84, 85, He was a super. Eighty six. Yeah. He moved up. Uh, Glenn Stevenson, his assistant, took over. Yep. But that's when they handed me a shovel and they said, "Here, start digging holes and fixing sprinklers." So you started immediately into irrigation. 80, yep, eighty six. Oh, I didn't realize that it was that early. I thought yep. you were just a grunt for a couple. No, no, well, somewhat. But then you know, I was there when they went. They built the Silver Course, right? The, the you know the Brian Silva expansion. Yeah. And of course, when they went to you know their eighteen holes at, at the Forest Course. Right. So I was heavily involved with everything with that. What's the history of of Eric and Tom coming in? Did they come in after you? No, I was like I said, I was already there. Uh, Tom, Dave hired Tom as a head mechanic. Oh, that's right, because he had worked with him down at, at Oak, Oak Hill. Hill. Right. Yeah. So then Tom went to school. Um, I was still trying to figure things out. So I wound up graduating Rutgers University with my plant science degree in 91. 
to, so, to stay well, in the golf industry? Well, yeah. That I mean, was the intent. After sitting down talking to Dave McGee and Tom, I said, go get your degree because Good. a lot of guys are just getting the two-year certificate. He didn't discredit it. It just, this would give you a leg up. So I got- Oh, so you got a four-year degree. I got a four-year degree in plant, the big plant degree. science. Good. And then, um, you know, made it work from there. I mean, yeah. I'd have to admit there's not many classes at the time Right. With turf grass, you know, no. uh, but you just, was the two year program in operation. Oh, it yeah. was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was an operation, but I, I just felt it better value to get the four year degree. Yeah. Yeah. That does make sense. So, um, so yeah, I worked there till 95. Wow. When I kind of got passed up for a position because I'd been there so long and been too familiar with everybody, which yeah. I understood. Yeah. I went to go work for Bob Dwyer up at Somerset Hills. One of my favorite golf courses. Oh yeah. In the, in the state, certainly. Yeah. And, and maybe in the country. I mean, it's a beautiful property yeah i worked there three seasons and then uh when i was superintendent at pebble creek down in colts neck for yeah. a couple of seasons and then uh it would be the golf show in new orleans in 2000 when they were store tractor was looking for people um, oh that's when so you went from there to store tractor I, is the uh, describe store tractor it's the local toro yeah local toro distributors in in new jersey central covering. northern jersey yeah. long island yeah um at the time but now now, since uh, now it's owned by Turf Equipment Supply. Was Pete McCormick there when you got there? No, Pete was at Pete. Pete's already gone? Okay. Yeah. Yep. We've had Pete on the podcast a couple of times. Right. Former yeah. But, but oddly enough, it was a position I had tried for um, when I was at Somerset Hills, but just things didn't line up and just didn't yeah. meant to happen. So uh, I went. The position at store? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Either. Oh, yeah. And then. Um, or I had forgotten most likely. But I had approached Mrs. DeChamps at the time yeah. and, and New Orleans and. Her surprise look was like, you still want to work for me? She said, of course. <laughs> so uh, 23 years later, so you know, you I was, finally gave in and you know, said, okay, you know, all right, kid, tired of you right. calling me. That's right. So um, when you were at Somerset, were you doing, all, was the irrigation your, your main work there or were you actually doing, you know, what well, we I was, I was the, work? one of the, one of two assistants. Yeah. Um, I primarily was hired to, to come in because they had just done a two row irrigation system. Up okay. There. That, so it was because of your irrigation experience. Right. Yeah. And that was with a, um, a trip down to Abilene, Texas with, at the Toro and Ascent facilities. Oh. Paul Granger uh, brought yep. down 35 guys from the metro area. And, and you him, 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 and him and I were talking about, you know, me getting out of, out of there and moving on. And as soon as we get back, Bob Dwyer calls up Paul Granger and says, I need somebody. My, Lance Rogers, who's been at Colonial Country Club ever since, um, he left. Oh. And so I kind of been following, you know. What year is this? 2000? Uh, It'll be earlier. We're... No, I started at Somerset in. 95. In March of 95. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Well, there you go. And then in uh, July of 98, I went to Pebble Creek. As the sole, as the head superintendent. Superintendent, yeah. And that, that was brand new. I mean, it was. Yeah, they had opened up the Labor Day before. Okay. So. Yeah, I remember spending a lot of time with you on that property. It was mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that was yeah. needed to be done. Is it still there? I think it's. Still oh yeah, there. yeah. No, they're they're doing nice. they're doing the rounds. They're doing, yeah. um, they're doing fine. I mean, I brought as much as I could of what I had learned from you and at Fiddlers. How long were you there? Again, three three seasons. Yeah. Uh, but you know, to because of budget reasons, I can only do so much. But I I yeah. did hit the greens up pretty hard. Whatever between uh, um, was it desert greens and <laughs> oh, every, that's every, dating us. You know. <laughs> uh, well, you remember the Jungle Greens? Of course I do. You know, so, the Jungle Greens at uh, Fiddlers? I don't know if we've talked about this, but Jerry and I would come up with names. Uh, you, know, we, you know, trying to name a product in a business like ours was always a challenge. And yeah. uh, one of our first products the name we named was Kick. Right. And and we're walking literally into our very first sales call at a local, actually it was our landlord at our office in Martins Creek, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And we're walking in the door and, you know, we have this liquid soil conditioner and we had 545, which we called 545, which was pretty easy, but we had no idea what the name of the product was. And we're literally walking through the door. He goes, well, what do you want to call it? I don't know. What do you want to call it? And he kicks the door open and, and he says, well, we'll call it kick. And I said, there okay, you there you go. And it's been a mainstay in our organization uh, yeah. since probably the late eighties. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and, uh, but desert greens was straight kelp, yep. uh, which we love. Mm -hmm. Uh, and jungle greens was a product that Jerry found a gentleman that spent his entire career as a scientist in the jungles of South America, looking for and isolating, um, um, microorganisms mm -hmm. and primarily brought them back to the States to devour, um, the material that would be in grease traps and, and restaurants. 
And Jerry took it and put it onto a fertilizer and it was unbelievable. I mean, I know, uh, you know, a lot of people, it was too Paul Latchaw Senior used to always say it was his favorite product. But right. uh, do you remember, uh, I'm going to forget his name now, the gentleman that was the super when you were at Fiddler's at Copper Hill in Flemington. Uh, so, Wayne? Uh, yeah, Wayne Foster. Wayne, yeah. So we he put it out on one of his, on his practice screen. And he calls me up and he goes, I, I, you know, I, I, you know, and I was living, you know, right down the street. So mm -hmm. he goes, can you come and look at this? And I said, you know, he goes, I think I have copper spot. And I'm like, I don't even know what copper spot is. So I called Jerry and said, Hey, can you just come down? We got to look at this. I think there might be an issue with jungle greens. It was so active in devouring, you know, things that had been sitting in the, in the soil for so long. It was just kicking stuff out and you could almost watch it like going. I mean, it was an active product. I wish we could still have that, but there, there wasn't much thatch left. At there was, when we that, that there down, wasn't that much, sure. there wasn't much of any, I mean, it worked. I mean, it, it really, I'll tell you what too, though. Too well. Yeah. It worked a little too well. And it really taught us an awful lot about what, uh, what we were doing. And, and, you know, and again, I give you guys so much credit. I, I mean, certainly Tom for just helping me out, understanding. And then, you know, we talk even, you know, Lisa Key, for still with us and she goes yeah i wish tom was still there because we have you know every once in a while you screw something up and you need an outlet for it. Yeah. where's tom when you need him at fiddlers and uh, actually i was out there uh, a couple of weeks ago and uh, man the work that they're doing is pretty cool yeah. and and i i know you're you're, do, you're still out there and and uh was bob there when you were working bob fellner yeah yeah he's he still, still there yeah he's still there and yeah. i saw bob the other day yep uh, and, and he's doing all the horticulture. It's cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So what I really want to get into is is really pick your brain on on where we are as an industry with irrigation. Uh, talk about what you're doing. Talk about what you did a little bit at store as an irrigation uh, specialist. And I'd like to know, you know, I mean, one of the things that we're trying to do with, with the podcast is just to give people some some ideas and maybe pick up some tips as to how to do something a little bit better and yeah. irrigation has always been one of those things and and needless to say i mean we had somebody on not too long ago and 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 i hope you disagree with this but they were saying um that there really hasn't been a whole lot of change in irrigation technology in 25 years is that is that a fair statement or is there a lot of stuff going on no there's a lot of stuff going on now that uh, with the decoder systems that have been going out there yeah that um, seems to be the big change right the capability of of being able to transmit data back and forth right. uh, a hell of a lot easier than having to put down a separate cable, you mm -hmm. know, as in the conventional satellite systems. Right. Um, because the decoders use a low voltage, they're able to, to send the data out and back and forth. And, you know, there's, there's projects in the area that they, they're using um, inputs and relays to manage all the, the PA systems. Oh, really? The precision, you know, the precision oh, there's, there's, yeah. you know, heat, cold, on, off, you name it. Right. So, so you really do have, uh, you know, a smart system, as you know, you yeah. would say, uh, uh, as opposed to what you were dealing with at Fiddler's, you know, 30 years ago. Yeah, I mean, fans, you name it, whatever, whatever you can put a relay All on. All that can be All can, controlled. Yeah. Right. And controlled on a phone. Yeah. Controlled on an iPad, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever the sys setup is. Yeah. So let, let's go back a little bit just to do some history. So you, you've you been doing irrigation mm -hmm. as a superintendent. You, you go to store tractor, you do, you're managing irrigation there. Yeah, I was the territory manager or roughly about 200 golf courses in central northern New Jersey. Construction or maintenance, both? Every Whatever. Whatever is coming. Whatever someone needed, whether it was just a sprinkler or, a, you know, figure out what they needed to do a green yeah. to a complete system. So, so this is 2000, the year 2000? 2000. 2000, yeah. So you start with store. Talk about, I mean, again, I really want to kind of get into where where the industry is going with irrigation, but talk about what you were, what were you dealing with? What was the technology in 2000? What were you dealing with back then? Well, 2000 was, you know, still controllers. Yeah. Uh, guys were kind of, some guys were kind of slow getting out of the electromechanical stuff. Yeah. You know. Just uh, because they were dragging their feet or right? well, it's just, new technology. That new technology, you know, fang costs, fang you know, yeah. just, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, when I was at Fiddlers, we were one of the first systems in the area that did a computerized system. Oh, and set that up. Yeah, it had the old touchscreen. Yeah, uh, yeah. DOS. But you were one of the first. It was under DOS. It was DOS, yeah. So I'm, <laughs> I'm dating myself here, but yeah. Yes, you are. It was a DOS system there and a summer For school. those who don't know what the hell we're talking about, <laughs> that was an old operating. That was what, the first real operating system, and it was archaic at yeah. the time it came out. But uh, it was, uh, yeah, yeah, it was. It, it was, was, yeah. It was better than Fortran or Cobalt. Uh, yeah. Learned it was, in high school. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah. Wow, that dates though. But yeah. Uh, yeah, so so that's how the system was run. But you guys were one of the first. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, uh, we were Fox Hollow because you know, we were closest to our tractor. Oh, because so if, you know, you, so if you're, anything went wrong, they were know, right there. And Paul Granger and whoever else were right there. Yeah. And take care of it. Probably. Yeah. Was but, Paul working for a store? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Has he always worked for a store? Or he's on his own. He's been on his own for a while. Well, that's what happened in 90s. Trying to think now, 97, when I first applied to the store, um, he brought me in for an interview because he lost Dean Schaltis, who I now work with with CMF Global. Right, right. Um, he he was leaving for Minnesota Turf. Uh -huh. So Paul wanted to bring me in and it just didn't work out because, you know, Bob Dwyer had worked for Mrs. D and he felt bad. And yeah, 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 yeah. anyway, it didn't work out. But soon after that, Paul left. To go out on his own. To go out on his own as yeah. a designer, and he's been doing that ever since. Yeah. Paul and I worked together at Rutgers for all the years that I was at Rutgers. He was the irrigation guy, mm -hmm. and he was well-loved and, and you know, right. well-respected, and, and you know, he was great. I mean, he yeah. really helped guys understand, you know, the whole thing, and, and, and you know, I, I think that was one of their, you know, favorite class. Yeah. We're now working with him at the the Trout National job down in Vineland. Oh, yeah. About oh, cool. a, a 4,000 sprinkler system going in down in there right now. So in, in 2000, you're at you're at um, store tractor. Yep. How big were the systems back then? I mean, they're not 4,000 heads. No, no. They're, what they're, was the normal, you know, good system back in 2000? I mean, double, double, double row was unheard know, of at some point. Yeah. Right? I mean, it was that was just coming on. But right. You know, it didn't take long. It was coming for... on in 2000, and that's how young it is? Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that. Oh, that's double row. But then, you know, then guys started spreading out to get the rough, so you had a triple row. Right. And then all of a sudden, then you had parts in and outs on the fairway edges. Yeah. So that we call it, you know, basically it's a five-row system. Right, right. And on laterals, and and then um trying to think when HDPE took off. Yeah. And then that's, that's been like the biggest change lately, because that's that's essentially, that's all everybody's doing is HDPE and, yeah. and decoders now. Right, right. Because it makes so, it so yeah, yeah it's let's so easy to add on from there. Yeah, let's get back to that because I want to go through that. But uh, are there are you still seeing double row systems anywhere? Yeah, we're going to be get, uh, doing a project in Ohio. It just for That's, budget reasons. I mean, yeah. When uh, you'll this, put a double row in, we're putting a double row in because they don't have anything now. Oh, because there's <laughs> nothing. <laughs> right. So, um, you know, we actually we did a uh, expanded double row when we uh, built Pinehurst Number Ten last year. So we were the bar golf renovations. You guys did. Oh, I didn't. You put in a. I didn't know that that was expanded. What's that mean? Expanded double row. Well, it's a double row, and then they added heads and, like and behind the bunkers okay. and some some landing areas and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So the renovation company built the Piners Ten. Yeah. And then we were right behind them putting the irrigation in. Oh wow! So it was our first job. Explain the system. It's a double row expanded. Yeah. So it's double row from the green back back right. to the tee. But then landing areas, they might stretch it out to three rows okay, or throw some heads behind the bunkers, so that the, kind of stuff. So the core of the fairway is covered, but then they were able to fill in yeah, all and, the uh, And that's the look they area. wanted to do. I mean, Pioneer's yeah. number two has a single row. Yeah. You know, and that's what they want. I was up uh, up at the Senior Open in, uh, in Rhode Island at Newport Country Club, and mm -hmm. they have no irrigation in their fairways, right. which which is really quite amazing that, you know, I mean, that's a spectacular property. Right. Um, but uh, so our most... So where are the average golf course? I mean, there's got to still be some stragglers that have some pretty lousy, old, broken down systems. Yeah, there's, it, but it, there's I, some, it's a bit, it's with, with the golf boom since COVID yeah. and the money that's getting pumped right. back in. People are changing uh, that first. Uh, yes. People are changing that first because for the longest time, no one did anything. Yeah. You know, just, they sat on the, you know, whether they just didn't want to it's pull a that. huge investment. Well, yeah. We're yeah. talking three, four. Yeah. I mean, we got systems in California that were bidding their six and seven million dollars. <laughs> yeah. I remember when it was the the number was a million. Oh, it's gonna cost you a million dollars. No. No. Uh and that was what in the nineties, mm -hmm. mid nineties, double row system, maybe. Yeah. yeah. And now you you're pushing what what do you get for six million dollars? That's well, it's again, it's a six million dollar, it's not a five row, but it's 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 just everything's covered. It's a big grid. Yeah. And with California, uh, guys, are, everybody's being incentivized, I think, being incentivized out there to update their systems because they're in the in the desert, especially Palm Desert. For efficiency? Yeah, for efficiency. Yeah. Because there's 130 golf courses out there. Yeah. And yeah. Um, no water. And no, Well, no, there's plenty of water. I found that out. They're, they're, they're sitting on a huge aquifer out there. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. The, oh, good. Come, comes, come, in Palm Springs. In Palm Springs. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, come um, overseeding time, they're pumping millions of gallons of water yeah, out yeah. each night. But, um, 
it's expanded to a point where every T, every any out of place area is either has a, a spray zone, a bubbler zone, drip zone. However, they can efficiently put this stuff down on, on all these plantings yeah. around all over the place. Uh, one job we had just bid on, I, I we, we're replacing something like 350 electric valves. Oh, wow. Just to manage all this stuff. Just to have it working. Yeah, yeah right. That's interesting. Yeah. When did when did the irrigation start to really, I mean, you've been doing this for a long time now. I mean, 30 some years. When did irrigation technology start really making changes? Uh, probably when the decoders started coming out. I Which mean, was when? Late 90s. It started. Oh, was that early? Yeah. I didn't realize it yeah, was, it was late, late 90s that the first generations were coming out. And who 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 came out with the first decoders? Um, I, I, I couldn't tell you. I mean, I think we both... You know, Toro Rainbird essentially came out with the product about the same about time. About the same time, yeah. You know, which is, you know, really an older system. They yeah. did, you know, from years ago. So at, but, at Labar Golf Irrigation, are you guys married to a specific system or are you just you designing whatever the superintendent wants to put in? Well, we're not we are installing. Um we're whatever the customer wants. You're just putting them in. We're putting them in and we're putting in putting in with the quality of known by uh, Rachel Bar renovations. Okay. Eric Labar Golf renovations. So you you you're working with everything out there. Yeah. Are there big differences between all the different systems? No, you know it's, it's a, one of the first questions that was asked about a year and a half ago. They said someone said, "Oh, you're going to do nothing but Toro systems because you worked there for 23 I, days." I I was trying not to ask you that question. <laughs> no, but, that's fine because yeah, that's kind of where I was going. Yeah, but but I said no, it it comes down who's going to support you. Right. And and as long as we do the job that the consultant you hired specified. Right. We're going to make sure it goes in right. Are you typically always working with a consult, an irrigation consultant who comes to this, works with this? I would say 95% of the okay. time, yes. And then you guys just come and do all the, the physical layout and, and installation. Yeah, we work with the consultant on the layout. And then, you know, right. he, um, again, uh, today. Who does the design work? The, they do? The, the consultant. Does, okay, yeah. so you you guys are literally just doing all the work, the, the heavy lifting. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. How long does it take? Uh, typical 18 holes, probably about 16, 18 weeks. Wow, that's pretty good long time. I mean, I was talking, again, I was talking to my project manager down at Trout, and they did, uh, they had to reorganize and do some landscape areas down there, um, but like $300,000 of landscape stuff we're yeah. putting in down there. But they're they're putting in anywhere from 90 to 100 spray heads a day or rotor heads a day. Wow. Yeah, they're they're moving down there. Yeah. I mean, I remember, you know, back, you know, certainly in the 90s, to early 2000s, I mean, everybody was bitching about the heads and they were always breaking and, you know, how many were on and off. Has that technology gotten better? Uh, I mean, it's always been, you know, one of the big complaints is like, oh, right. uh, you know, they turn on the system and, you know, a dozen heads aren't even working. Well, is that just a, is that a, a symptom of age? Is it a symptom of maintenance? It's a both. I mean, yeah. it's a symptom of age. I mean, a lot of the older systems don't have a what they call a surge protected solenoid. Right. So they're getting, you know, the, the, right the, the, the slightest flash, yeah. they'll, they'll go bad. Um, Has that changed? Has that technology yeah, that, that should, that, You know, both both manufacturers have systems now where that's backed up. Protected. Protected. And, but it comes down to maintenance at the end of the year. If yeah. you're not, if you're not winterizing it properly. Yeah. You're, you're leaving yourself open to whatever you're going to find, you know, come springtime. Do you see that often? Um, do you go in and have to fix problems? Not, because no, well, our, our goal is not to fix problems, of course, right, but, yeah. you know, so we'll be, um, uh, trout will be our first one that we have to winterize because we, they don't winterize down in Pinehurst. So, cause they don't have to, Yeah, they don't have to. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. but, um, How, where's the, where's the line of winterization in, on the East coast? I, I don't know yet. Okay. Probably or probably in the mid Atlantic in certain parts. Yeah, probably in Southern Virginia, maybe. Yeah, or, I would yeah. think so. Yeah, I'm sure. Mo and I, most of the guys that I know are, are blowing their systems out. Yeah. Um, and now it just seems to be getting later and later. And I think some guys are pushing that because the weather is so mild now in the winter. And yeah. so, you know, I, I certainly have talked to guys that take the risk of, you know, maybe we'll get through the winter and keep the year because, you know, you get into the winter and it gets really dry and, you know, it's not a bad thing to have a little water going out mm -hmm. there. Uh, but you're, you're dancing. Are the systems better from a winterization standpoint? Or, or is it still, I mean, you're still dealing with plastic pipes. You're still doing plastic pipes. It's, it's all, you know, it's all mechanically driven. So it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's all about the volume of air. I mean, people think that yeah. you can, I, I can crank this compressor up to hundred pounds of pressure. Yeah. I can get in and out of there in a day. Whereas you should be doing it in three days at a lower pressure and just taking your time and doing it right. 
What is so as a director of estimation? So obviously you're doing the estimates of the job, mm -hmm. and logistics is then you're scheduling the jobs as well in your role. Well, at, I, at Labar, working hand in hand with uh, our vice president Brian Chapin. Yeah, um, I'll do the material takeoffs on the jobs, um, put that together in our spreadsheet, him gotcha. and I will go back and forth, figure out what where we need to be, and then I'll coordinate the rentals, the suppliers, uh, our project managers for each job. I mean, him and I are both constantly, we're constantly all day talking to the guys. Yeah, so. you, you are one of the busiest people. Alive. We've been trying to get you here for, what, three months now? Yeah, Maybe about. since January? Yeah. When did I talk to you? I think yeah. that's been since January. And you well, only since, live... Since the golf show. Yeah, I was yeah, going to say, since I January. Golf show. And, and you live, what, 25 minutes south of me here, which is kind of funny. Um, what What's the, you know, I mean, I, I got to imagine these new systems coming in, especially with a guy that's been around and working, you know, an older system. It's got to be like a kid in a candy shop playing with these new systems. Yeah. I mean, what's, what's, you know, I mean, I, is, there's got to be a pretty strong learning curve for these things. It's on the software mainly. Yeah, I mean, exactly. the, the, the software is, and the, 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 uh, the younger assistants and, you know, they're, they're the ones that, that they pick up on it right away. Yeah. So that's, that's, and, and I was at a job recently where I asked a super, just, I always ask, you know, which way do you think you'd be going? So I'm not sure that, you know, he gave me his reasons, but he goes, listen, I'm the one that's managing my crew who's always had this and they're the ones using it. Yeah. Which is, you know, a lot of, a lot, a lot of guys will do that. They'll, the, you know, same thing with equipment. It's like I always, whenever I was looking at a piece of equipment, I would have the guys operate it. I'm not going to operate all the time. Right. Cause you're not running. Right. Anyway. So I want their input. Make too. sure they, they feel comfortable with it. So the superintendent was getting the input of his staff and yeah. they were going to make a, a joint decision. So that's what, I mean, yeah, it's, you could, it's the technology's there to, to do whatever you want, but, or yeah. you can just keep it simple and, Make sure that you know the sprinkler comes on. So as I kind of started this conversation, there really has been an awful lot of technological changes in the mm -hmm. last 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. 10, 10, 10, 10 years. Yeah. That's when all the, the controllers and 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 all that you know, you know the decoder stuff really yeah. kind of taken off. So so in case you know somebody doesn't understand what that means, explain what the decoder system is. What 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 is that actually doing? You no, know, the decoder system, instead of having a a, a satellite at each individual a box at, a box at each, at hole. each hole yeah is a, essentially a wire path going from the computer to the sprinkler right on a low voltage current and all it's doing is sending out an impulse right to turning on a uh, or activating a dc latching solenoid yep so you don't need that draw the ac draw current to keep it going as you do with the satellites right and and then when when the decoder gets that signal and it gets it's okay it's 5 minutes after 5 minutes it just times out it just turns it off. Right. It just yeah. turns it off and it goes on to the next. Where one. are the decoders physically? Um, not, it could be in the valve box. They are typically right uh, on the, the Ringbirds is on the solenoid. Yeah. Toros is on, either inside the cavity of the of their head or on the side of the head. Okay. So it's right there. So it's, it's yeah. Uh, what's the, what's the mechanics of it? I mean, are, is there, do they break? Do they have to be maintained? I mean, are there issues? Do you have to go and repair them? The, the, the one issue, or not even an issue, the one thing with a decoder system is you got to make sure your splices are right. Okay. You have to but have that's your solid, job though, isn't it? What's isn't our, you that's guys our job. Setting it up. Right. Setting it up and doing it right. But even for repairs and troubleshooting down the right, road, right. Um, every so, every so many feet, there's a surge protector with a ground plate. Okay. As opposed to the, how many feet? Um, thousand feet, give or okay. take, or uh, uh, anywhere from fourteen to fifteen heads, uh, depending. So if on something the happens, you can identify, isolate that area right. where there was some damage, and and the system tells you that. Yeah, I yeah. assume. Yeah, the, the system. So you know, I mean, so instead of having to go hunt around for a break or for some damage, you've got this thing right at your fingertips. Yeah, the the systems will tell you between what two sprinklers you have a short. Right. So as yeah. opposed to. A satellite system where at each box you'd have to have a grounding plate and yeah. then rely on another wire going connecting them all and then coming back to the computer. Right. Talk about the piping. So it's changed in the last 20 years. Oh yeah. It's been primarily it's everybody's been going to HDPE. As, and that's a lot more expensive, isn't it? Not so much anymore. What what it tell what is it exactly? High density polyethylene. All right. And you know? and so it's still a plastic thing. And I I mean one of the things that I remember vividly is during the heat of um covid and everything was restricted everything was first of all it went up in price by 4x or oh, something. Did, yeah. and but the availability of it was unheard of oh yeah it was it was three four months to get yeah. pipe. 
if uh, yeah. more. And, and if you're in the middle of a, you know, of a project, I mean, that had to be, I mean, I, I know, you know, we've had Pete went on here, a dear friend, and, and he, he was smart enough for some reason to have ordered a lot of the piping before uh, the project really got going. And he just got lucky because it hit right at COVID. And he said, man, if we hadn't had this brought in, a, we wouldn't have gotten it and it would have cost us a million dollars more Right, it, just in those couple but, of years. But during that, irrigation was a little bit more manageable. Yeah. Talk to the guys who are trying to get a sprayer. Right. Or an aerator. <laughs> yes. I, so, I, so, and that's still a nightmare for well, a lot yeah, of guys, so, so depending on who you're talking to. I think COVID taught everybody to budget and, and plan way ahead. Yeah. And you're still seeing that? Oh, yeah. With the irrigation? I system? just, I was a big, Waiting to hook up with you this afternoon. I just found out that we uh, we got um, looks like we're in Pennsylvania for a job in twenty eight. Oh wow! We're looking. Yeah, we got jobs. You know, we're, we're next year. We're going to be really busy. Twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight. Yeah, I mean, it's it's already lining up. So if you're doing something like this, you're working that far out. You're working three, four years out. Yeah, um, or at least they, they are. Sec- see what the, the are they securing equipment? No, they will. They will secure the contractor. They're getting the contractor because so that's, that's your that's time. Good because. As busy as we are, everybody's busy. Yeah, I mean, it's just yeah. We we've we've had a, our our growth has skyrocketed. Yeah, um, but again, we, what we're doing, every other contractor is doing the same thing. Right, right. And it just and a lot of this growth is because of the boom and there's money involved. Or are you dealing with a lot of new construction as well? You're doing both. We're doing both. Yeah. I mean, um, are you all over the country? Uh, my my territory went from Central Jersey <laughs> to the lower 48, <laughs> and then. Looks like we might have some uh, jobs uh, off off in the off the coast. Um, <laughs> so you're not going to be home. So no, the poor Denise never going to see no, you again. So, yeah, I'm going to no, have to. She's she's like she's got a pool boy at home. I hope. <laughs> no, um, no. I mean, it's it's going to be interesting to figure those out. Yeah. How to figure how to contain her. Uh, you know, a million dollars worth of irrigation equipment, and you know, and ship and, it over. And as the as the logistics guy, you're the one. Kind of, are you guys doing the ordering of the of the equipment at yeah. Labar? So you bring. So as as your part of the gig is, you're bringing everything to the table. Yeah, they they bring. You know, you bring it all it's, in. It's and, a and lump sum furnish and install. Furnish and install. Okay. Uh, I was up at Oyster Harbors last week for a couple of days, bringing in six truckloads of pipe. I had to go because our project manager who's going to be at that job is currently out in PGA West. So <laughs> I'm, I'm running around in a, in a telehandler and loading all that pipe. Thursday, I'm heading down to Mira Vista in Fort Worth because we have a truckload of uh, copper and wire coming in. Oof. Only be, These are only coming in now. Now, Mira Vista starts in October. Oyster Harbor starts in September. But we ordered that stuff to beat price increases. Right, right, right. So I'm in constant contact as well with the with the distributors and they're telling me hey we we just got a letter from you know this pipe company hey no, hey no, guess what yeah. guess what we had a little storm down in the gulf oh boy you know that's we're so it's that prices. sensitive oh yeah yeah and it can yeah. fluctuate substantially i would assume right but still it's so we just found out today it's 10 to 12 weeks to get two inch pipe wow could still manage that Versus equipment and anything else. Right, right, right. You know, that makes sense. I hadn't yeah. really thought about that way. But yeah, because equipment could be two years out, you know, which right. doesn't make any sense. So mm-hmm. you're still not shutting down projects no. and, and doing all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I would assume the superintendent is trying to manage you guys before they start getting grass down so that they can keep it going. I mean, you got to be there before before they start doing anything. Oh, yeah. So, but if they're, if they're waiting on, on pipe or, or any of the equipment, then they're just holding back seating. Yeah. Well, I mean, interesting with to, to that is Pioneer's 10. All the, we were there, all the equipment was there, all the pipe was there, but huh. the architect, they were still taking down trees. So, oh, really? so we had, so 20, you were way ahead of the architect. So, 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 so because of, uh, because of local restrictions or no, just no, it's time? just the timing and yeah. just how everything turned out. Um, so our crew got real good at p- putting all the pipe together. And, yeah. You know, the 40, you know, the 40 foot sections we had. Right, right, Five, right. six of them put together and we just drag them out there because yeah. it was all sand anyway. So we would, we would, you know, once the architect gave us a hole, LGR would go in and, and build it and then LGI would irrigate it. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So it. So it's all right there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, when the, you know, these two jobs coming up this fall, we essentially will have everything there before we start. So you have to see a sur, a, a sur, you know, a surcharge, a, a you know, surplus of people coming in and buying uh, irrigation systems on existing courses that have just been a mess. 
mean, I can't tell you how many times I've been on courses and you just, you can just see from an agronomic standpoint, mm -hmm. you can just see how, you know, the problem is irrigation coverage. They're just not getting it right. or heads are broken or, you know, they had old archaic systems. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's, it, it's like, like I said earlier, uh, I mean, the guys that are working in those kind of environments, I mean, it's a nightmare until they can, you know, and convince the club to spend a lot of money. Mm -hmm. What's, what's the advice that you give to a superintendent when, when they get to that point where they say, we've got to really fight for an irrigation system. What's the best way to posture that conversation? If you're a superintendent with your greens committee or your owner or whoever the powers to be, what, what do you see typically when you're working with these guys as, as in terms of the politics of getting you know, how do I posture my boss for, uh, you know, to spend millions of dollars on irrigation? Well, the first I, I did this at Store Tractor was, you know, they my customers would say, who would you recommend as a consultant? I'm like, well, wait a minute. I don't want it. That's not for, I don't want to make. Of course not. You don't right. want to get in the middle. I don't of want to get in the middle of that. Here's three, four, five guys. Right. Here's the guys in town. You know, I mean, yeah. Go, go talk to them and interview them. And because this is a commitment. And right. you need to work with these guys and get along with these guys, yeah. but then you need to find the guy that's going to help that you're you with, comfortable with that you can, you know, where it's going to get it done and get it done and sell it to the club. Right. So, so um, how, the, how, what's the typical process is the superintendent kind of doing that on his own and saying, Hey, I'm going to chat with you. And can you sell these guys? Well, or but, is it a combat? I mean, I'm sure it's a little bit of everything, but yeah. I, I'm trying to get to the point where what's, you know, what's the strategy if you've got a shitty old uh, system that you really want to get rid of, but you know that you're going to have the battle on your hands to say, hey, I'm going to need $3 million. Well, I mean, to have one of these guys come in and do an evaluation, it's yeah. not a lot of money. I mean, so a couple they... few grand. Right. So that's not a problem. But then he, the super is good, then has to, you know, get the greens committee. Right. And, and just have it, you know, slowly and get some momentum. Is it is it mostly uh, dollar saved? I mean, the ROI is there on a newer system. I mean, what, what's the return on investment on um, on a new system? Um, I mean, you look back at some of those charts that the USGA made. I mean, typically yeah. an irrigation system is somewhere give or take twenty five years. Yeah. So anybody that's you know thirty plus years old, I mean, that system doesn't owe them anything anymore. No, not at all. But the problem is, is they're not sexy. Yeah, exactly. You know, a a four million dollar renovation in a clubhouse versus four million dollars on an irrigation system. Right. Clubhouse is going to win that battle. Do you see this? I I always had this uh, conversation with superintendents. You know, they get they finally get the irrigation system approved. They're getting it put in. Uh, but what happens is that now that you know, like you just said, it's not sexy. They don't really see anything. Uh, but the expectations are so large. They expect now that we've got, you know, I just invested $3 million on an irrigation system. They expect this to be Augusta. And and I, I, I have seen over my career, many guys that have really struggled and or lost their jobs because they came out of the chute. And, you know, especially, uh, you know, when they're doing reconstruction or, you know, new grass and all mm -hmm. that stuff, uh, you know, it's not Augusta the day they turn that new system on. And and the expectation is so high. Is that still prevalent? Or are we as an industry good enough now to build the proper expectations? I mean, no, I think the guys have gotten real, real good. At, I mean, I go back to my experience at Somerset Hills. Yeah, I was brought in after that system went in. Right. And Bob Dwyer and I had that dialed in. Uh, it, the place looked great. Yeah. You know, even though it was just a double row system, it's better than the single row impact heads that they had. Right. Um, when, uh, we came back in on a Monday and they said, eh, you, you got to shut the water off. I was like, what are you talking about? He goes, he goes, it was, it was too green. It was too lush. That club, oh, oh, they, that club, they wanted, wanted they, they wanted, wanted the... it. They wanted the fairways as hard as this table. <laughs> they wanted the roll. <laughs> And so we said, okay, fine. We shut it off for almost, you know, that week. And they came back. Oh, the place is great. Wow. Yeah. So it it's all relative to the club. It's it, it is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, if, I mean, I've heard stories of, of of how much, I mean, the piping and the conduit and multiple pump stations that Augusta has. I mean, that yeah, but yeah. that's that's a different. Well, key. Augusta, you can't compare it to. It's kind of no, Hollywood. But, but I had an owner uh, where I worked that. You know, he, you know, like everybody else. I mean, the, the owners watch the the Masters. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's and, the problem. And, that's, and, that's and the... then you know, the next Monday says, "Hey, where can we get that green sand?" Yeah. <laughs> you exactly. want the green sand? Okay. Here, here's the bill. Yeah. So it's like, ah, oh, we don't oh, need that oh, anymore. Well, maybe, maybe yeah, not so much. Right. Oh, that's an interesting story that they had you turn off the system. Yeah. Because it was, you know, but yeah, you know, there you go. 
Uh, talk about the technology of the head itself. Has it changed a lot uh, from 30, you know, when you were at Fiddler's? I mean, I mean, I mean, they look a lot different to me, but I'm a novice and I don't know what the hell I'm talking they, about. The, the newer heads give you a lot more options of what you can do. Yeah. I mean, you, Are, do they last longer? Do they break as much as they used to? I mean, you know, I, it's, it's about the same. I okay. mean, it's, you know, if it's again, well taken care of, you'll get your the life span out of it. There's always going to be a maintenance factor in those yeah. things. But, but, you know, back in the day, it was either a, um, uh, a 45 and 90 or uh, 180 degree sprinkler. You, you didn't have options or full circle. Right. Now with the technologies out there, you can adjust the thing from 30 to 330 degrees or full circle. You can do on your computer. No, on, manually at the sprinkler. Oh, okay. Um, and if it's a 180, you now can put back rear nozzles or tail nozzles to throw in the back behind you where you'd never had that before. Right, right. So you really can get complete coverage oh, yeah. on these new systems. And the, and the way both softwares, uh, the, the, the two I primarily work with, I mean, you, you can get it down, you know, with these arcs. I mean, you can get it yeah, to 172 yeah. degrees if you want to and, you know, get the protractors out there and have the, have the interns go measure all that stuff. What's the maintenance on the heads? I mean, what what's the day-to-day -day maintenance? I mean, are you, I mean, what, what, what do you, what's the best advice to tell a superintendent in terms of how to keep the heads you know, obviously keeping the grass off of them so they can move, but yeah, I mean, I mean, if they're regular watering, I mean, they're going to maintain themselves. Yeah, you know, um, after a number of years, maybe the the something might get stuck in the the body the the body valve, and and some scoring might happen or that right. kind of stuff. It's more actually what we see is, uh, or I've seen in the past, is that you know it's recommended on all the gate valves is you should exercise uh -huh. those. Oh, and that, that makes nobody sense. Nobody does it. And then after about five or 10 years, they're wondering why the gate valves are stuck. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. that's nice. See, I hadn't heard that. I, yeah. That's fast. I mean, it makes perfect sense. Right. So do you talk to people about this? Yeah. They, they, what do you, you have know, to do? You just open and you just kind yeah. of work them a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Just need to get your keys out there and just close yeah. them, open them, and that's it. But how often? Yeah. A couple of times a year, you should. But yeah, makes but sense. But then, you know, you mentioned it's a, you know, how when many I was gate valves typically on a 18 hole property? 30, 40. Okay. I mean, so it's, it's a job, but yeah, it's pretty, like I said, a good job for an intern. Are most, uh, most clubs these days have a dedicated irrigation guy? A lot do. Yeah. Um, Certainly the bigger clubs with the bigger staffs. What I saw at store was we in Jersey, we did a lot of service work at a store. Right. Because there weren't as many irrigation guys right. in this side of the river. But then when you get to Long Island, there, there was half the service guys that we, employed right because there's a lot more irrigation tax that makes sense yeah it just it depends on you know, it's, it's i think it's it's a money driven issue yeah I mean, of course you, you can you can afford that on your on your salary but in your budget what is the um what is the get water savings of a of a, a newer system i mean can you actually justify using less water because it's more uh directed Yes. Are you, yeah. I, uh, you, any, what, you must have some statistics on that. I, you I don't about? have anything handy. I know Matt Willigan did a study on, I uh, forget which hole in the forest course before he did the, the, the he went from a single row, 690, right. or no, uh, a double row. He went to a triple row. There was a, there was a savings in water. Yeah. He's be able to put it down where he wants it and when he wants it. Well, yeah. So, I mean, I don't and know what that number is. a lot is. better. Yeah. You're right. You know, and is, is that an art? I mean, I remember... Uh, I mean, I remember when I was teaching at Rutgers and, you know, one of the hardest things was teaching people how to, to water. I mean, it's an art. Mm -hmm. uh, I would assume it's also an art using, you know, your, your phone and, and plugging everything in. I mean, you still have to have a little touch about how you manage the computer. Oh, yeah, system. I mean, you, you know, these, you'll see a system go in and, but then you still see the guys out there hand watering. Well, of course. Yeah. But, but, you know, even with the system and, and you know, that's where you're going to save your, your water is through that system because you can control it a little bit better. Yeah. You get the sensors are all right and, and all that stuff. Does the, does the system tell you if one of the heads is uh, messed up? Only electrically. Okay. Yeah. So, so I mean, from, from a mechanical standpoint, it does not. Um, I was going to say, going back to that um, system I sold, I is a seasoned superintendent there for quite a while. And so I said, okay, this sounds great. You know, he had a double, triple row, whatever it was. And he was going to a big five row system. And first thing I said to him, I was like, well, you have to learn, relearn how to water this place. And he'd been there 20 years. I was getting, that's kind of where I was getting at. I was he, trying to figure he that looked out. At me like, what are you talking about? I've been here 20 years. I, just, I said, do you realize you're going from 75, 80 foot spacing down to a 55 foot spacing? Right. Real tight, really controlled, directed. You're 
you're going to have hot spots go away, but then you can see hot spots pop up where you never saw it before. Yeah. Mean, it's, just, it's just it's just the nature of the beast. You can control that hot spot. Can you fix the ones that are popping up? Well, I'm talking about just dried out areas, I right? Mean, you know, but you I mean, you can sure. move you can move ahead and 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 yeah, or just add more time yeah. to it or whatever. But but yeah, it was that was an interesting conversation I had with him. And and, and once he realized, oh yeah, you're right, and he saw it go in and. Like, okay. So there is a learning curve. Yeah, there is. Even for an old dog. Right. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I, I, I don't know if you felt followed up with that conversation, but how long does it take to really kind of get to understand that? Well, probably the through the first full season of yeah. after it goes in. Yeah. Because systems will typically start anywhere from July with main lines and then laterals September. We get done in, in December. Right. right. Um, I tell guys, get through the next full season. Right. And then you're, then you're going to have to relearn how to yeah. water the place. Is it hard for a new guy coming into a property that has one of these fancier systems to learn it? I mean, so if I, if I'm coming from a job where I, you know, I had a, you know, older system and now I'm coming into a property that's got a five, five row system. I mean, am I, 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 you know, I certainly have talked to guys that are coming in and saying, yeah, I don't know how to run this thing. I mean, they, you know, I, there's a little fear factor there, I think. Well, of course it's what you're yeah. used to, but, uh, that's where you just but is it easy enough to pick it up oh yeah yeah, yeah. do you guys do the training uh we'll bring in each job we'll do what we'll do is we do a training for our staff okay. just to get reacquainted you know with the hdp equipment and that kind of stuff and right. in the the wiring and the sprinklers but at the same time we'll bring the staff of the course in right so they're seeing what we're doing and okay. what they're going to get because again a lot of these we're doing you know they don't have hdp Right, right. And, you know, putting that together and all the parts and pieces that are used now. And, right. You know. Does the consultant that they've hired typically follow through after you guys are gone? Um, yeah, he gets involved with the mapping, you know, yeah. uh, and all that kind of and the GPS stuff. But is he there to help them, you know, make sure that they're following through with using it correctly? Um, the, typically that's the distributor or, they, or the sales, okay. the territory manager will, will make sure everything's going. Okay. Yeah. So it's not like you come in, you throw the system in and then you say, Hey, good luck. Here's the no. keys, you know? No. And, and, and depending on the specifications, it's anywhere from one to two years. Yeah. We have to provide a warranty on it anyway. You're going to probably hate this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. No, go ahead. What's the, uh, what, what's the downfall? I mean, wh where do things go wrong? What, what, what are things that you typically have to deal with as, as a problem after it's been in house? I mean, what kind of after things it's been installed? after it's been installed? Yeah. I mean, what are the kind of things that people, you know, typically will, you know, get nervous about or break? What what breaks first? And why? Well, I, I think it goes to, to goes back to winterization and the maintenance mm. and, and, and you making sure the system's put to bed. Yeah. I think you, you do that right. It eliminates a so lot that's the, of problems. That's the biggest problem that's in the any biggest irrigation. Problem. Yeah, yeah, always has been, right? Yeah. For any old system, for any system. You know, you typically, I mean, you have your lightning storms, but then that's more of a distributor issue. Right. For service and that kind of stuff. Um, we don't get involved with that, but, you know. What about flooding? Does flooding affect the irrigation system? Um, not anymore with the decoder systems. Because they're protected. They're, yeah. they're, they're secure. Right. Yeah. How about, the, how about the system itself? I mean, I've seen some pretty bad washouts. What happens in a situation like that with the irrigation system? Are there, is there changes that have to be made or do they have to come in and, and redo a part of the... Uh, yeah. I mean, if, if there's a break that, you know, we put in and, and yeah. it was a bad weld or something like that, yeah, we're in there repairing everything yeah. and making sure it's done correctly. You well, know, we're seeing all these horrible storms. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I know a number of courses I work on pretty closely that flood every year. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I've never even asked the question, of what does that do to the irrigation system? Does it cause problems? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it does. But again, if you're Maplewood being one of them, yeah. um, they would flood every, you know, every little shower down there. But they would call me when I was uh, calling, you know, with their territory manager. Yeah. Hey, we got a storm coming in. Can you come in and disconnect our computer and get it to high ground? Because oh, really? Because they would, it, four feet of water would come into the shop. And, you know, <laughs> a number of times we we're replacing computers there because they were floating down the hallway. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but no, with, with the decoder systems, we don't see that anymore. You know, I, I, uh, I, I bought a, you know, I mean, you know, I, I've been driving a long time in my life and I used to be able to like work on cars. And now, of course, the cars that you buy, you can't even think about working on them. I bought a car recently and the guy says to me, look, if there's a problem, it's human error. You know, I'm like, well, I don't buy that. And, I, you know, I've been driving it for six months and I've had a couple little issues and I realized 
oh damn it's it's all human error i mean i can assume that these systems are probably as strong as as the new technology in an automobile i mean if there's a problem is it fair to say it's probably going to be human error oh sure if the guy decides to light up the fairway and and shuts <laughs> and shuts it down you're going to get some pretty good surge yeah or water hammer going through the system yeah. so uh that kind of stuff but um yeah i mean it's it, it's the decoder stuff it's once you get it and learn it, I think it's easier to to work to on, work to, on to it, maintain yeah. and diagnose than the other. The uh, I the would think system. so. And you yeah. don't have these stupid boxes anymore that right. people always run into and smash or mm -hmm. trees fall on and all that kind of stuff. Well, that leads to good sales. So I like <laughs> <laughs> exactly keeps you in business. Yeah, exactly. It, it definitely keeps you in business. Uh, you know, there, there's uh, you know, does does the quality of water have any impact? on in an irrigation system if you got really i mean we do work you know run soil uh, water samples for a lot of folks mm -hmm. and some of the waters i mean you know kevin hicks and i or anybody on our team will look he'll send this to me as you gotta look at this one and it's like oh my god i don't even know how you how do you use that water does does the quality of water uh, affect the system at all i mean is there any component within the system where a high sodium high bicarbonate or high metal uh you know high salt concentration water affect uh an irrigation system yeah they're 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 they will i mean they're they're solenoid where the solenoid the solenoid okay you know, the pump house at the, well yeah the, the, then you're talking about a stainless steel pump house yeah which you know another not, zillion dollars another zillion dollars for that uh, a lot of the consultants have already kind of gotten ahead of that and almost every fitting now is stainless steel they've gotten away from the brass because of the water they just just because of water and they just said okay this, it's not that much more so yeah. let's just go so it's steel. The, yeah so so the brass is kind of going out because yep. it was corroding and, yeah. and 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 messing up so this is pretty common now out west where all this water issue yeah. is well yeah you see it on the east coast um we haven't done much work yet i, I imagine down in florida it can't be that the water down there can't yeah be the florida great. waters aren't great i mean right. there's a lot of sodium so mm -hmm. i can imagine that uh yeah that they are so um we're i told you this was going to go fast and we're, we're <laughs> we pushed an hour um what advice? I mean, I want to, I want to look into a new system. Um, you know, I got an old crappy system in my course. Uh, I know I'm going to have a problem getting it sold. W give a two second advice here or two minute advice. Well, I mean, help me understand what am I going to, you know, how am I going to start the process and how am I going to pitch it to the members? I think, I think it starts with the super, you know, going with uh, their territory manager that's been supporting them Yeah. and trusting, and they would then you know, recommend some consultants. Just start that conversation. Start that, just, just start it. Bring them in, sit them down, have lunch. Right. Just hey, what's going on? Yeah, and then yeah, you know, uh, the consultant brings a, a third party into it, where you know, he's making sure that we or any other contractors putting it in the ground right. Yeah. And if it's, something's wrong, it's you know he's there to to work for the club. You know, he's working for the club to make sure it's done that way. Oh, so the consultant is overseeing you oh, guys. Oh yeah. yeah. So, yep. He's good overseeing. Any guys. of them real pains in the ass? <laughs> You don't have to answer that. That's, I'm sure. How many are there? A lot of consultants out there. Is that a big, uh, yeah. a lot? Of, so there are. I know. I know a number of them in 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 this area, um, and I, you know, of course, run into them all over the place. But I didn't realize it was that. You know, I mean, that's really their whole job. It's yeah, just that. Well, and, and designing, it's, and it's the big firms these days yeah. because the way this the technology is going. With yeah. The GPS. I mean, we're we're um, PGA West. We had so all of our project managers have the handheld Trimble units right. that we're collecting down to the centimeter. Uh, so when everything gets, you know, we're, we're, let me back up. So we're bidding a project, we're bidding off a plan that's right. been GPS. It's pretty accurate, but when the architect comes in and changes grass lines and that kind of stuff, <laughs> re, re, reroutes, reroute things. So the, we will which then, happens all the time. Nah, yeah. So we then have to go in and and re GPS that grass line. Yeah, that file then gets uploaded to the consultant, yeah. either him, his son, or whoever is working in the office. Interesting. Redesigns it, kicks it back to us. We then have the points on our GPS, yeah. and then we can go reflag the the whole green within a couple hours. Yeah, and and, and then get it done. Are are there big differences between architects and what what happens with what you guys are doing? Do architects mess up um, the irrigation setup? I mean, is it? I mean, are there some architects that are easier to work with than others? No, but but it's not so much the architect. I don't think half the time it's going to be the owner and the architect. You know, well, hey, the owners are always a problem. <laughs> but, but they'll they'll come in and after everything's installed. There's been a number of times that we've had our 
you know, on different projects, we've had to pull out what we've just put in. Yeah, yeah. Because the, oh, green, really? the green got shifted, this this got moved and that kind of stuff. After you had already come in. After we all come in and, yeah. and, and almost had it to grade. So somebody's saying, oh, you know, that should be moved over 20 feet and now everything gets pulled out. Right. Can you reuse everything? Oh, yeah, of course. All right. So nothing gets lost. It's just the, it's just the labor. We're doing a job in uh, Palm Desert right now that with the irrigation went in last year. Oh, um, oh really? A different company. Yeah. Uh, the renovation team is going in there. We're doing the bunkers. But then we're coming behind um, yeah. and essentially pulling the pipe out of the ground and put it and putting it and reusing it and, and putting it back where Fixing it needs to be. It, yeah. Yeah. Because wow, it, that's interesting. Because this stuff's expensive. Yeah. You know, and they, they just spent who knows how much on that system. So they're like, yeah. what can we, what can we, can we save as much as we can? You are probably one of the, you know, certainly what you do is probably front line of seeing where the economy of golf is. And based on the fact that I can never reach you and I couldn't get you in here for six months, um, I'll ask you the question. I mean, what's your take on where we are as an industry on the state of the union of golf industry right now? I think it's doing real well. I mean, yeah. I, I have the privilege working for Rich um, and the, the client Rich base, LeBar. Rich yeah. LeBar, the, the client base that he has and the people right. he knows. I mean, it's 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 when he, inter he interviewed me almost two years ago. He said, uh, you know, the sales thing you did for 23 years, just forget it. <laughs> I'll take care of that. Just just help run the division. Just make just, it work. Just make it work. Is that good? It's been great. Oh, good. It, it's been a, it, I got to admit, it's, it's been a big learning curve because, you know, you're in the trenches now. I'm in the yeah. trenches in the trenches and the contracting yeah. side, especially on the bidding side. Yeah, I bet. I mean, from what we did, what we were doing a year and a half ago has completely changed to how we're figuring stuff out now. But it, just, just, how things are, you know, from a, from a spreadsheet and how to, yeah, right. Computer you know, system. Yeah. you know, being able to have 4,000 items that I need to put man hours to right? and figure out how many of these. That's need. how many SKUs you're working with? You're, oh, yeah. you're juggling. A, lot, a lot of the older stuff, you know, yeah, a lot yeah. of ductile iron is still there, but we still yeah. run into renovation jobs and I need to put that in there. But yeah, I mean, and, and I need to, and we're always tweaking the, that was numbers, you know, for yeah. man hours, you know, how, how many, how many man hours it take to put a sprinkler in the ground? Yeah, that kind of stuff. Um, but um, you yeah. must have that down fairly tight by now. It's it felt really good this time last year when uh, we had gotten Annandale uh, Country Club out in uh, Pasadena mm. that uh, we were right. Uh, that was probably yeah about this time last year. And we were only a few months old. We were right in the middle between two other guys. They and the, the low was uh, the low bidder forgot a bunch of stuff. So because we're doing the renovation work that helped us get in. They as, had, as they we, got the bid as we, the low bidder. No, no, they they threw they, the low bidder. They out. threw the low bidder out because, because they saw that there were missing pieces. Right, that's so, got to be frustrating as all get yeah. out for you guys. I can't even imagine. But again, after a few months to doing, you know, getting into this, um, to to be right in the middle of two other contractors yeah. doing this well, like, damn, we're getting this, we're getting this figured out. We're getting good at this. Yeah, yeah. After, and, and after thirty years, you're an overnight success. Well. <laughs> I know the feeling. And now now we're we're at a point where we're getting into metrics and trying to compare everything and see yeah. where we are and yeah. you know how we feel on you know doing these bits. And that's falling on your desk a lot of it. Uh, I'm doing the initial frontline stuff but then working with Brian yeah. uh, him yeah. and he's got a you know a feel like you know he's I got rela my relationships he has his relationships we work really well together. Um, you know, and then like I said, you know, then Rich's relationships are Right. Yeah, you know, he's been doing. It. How long's Rich been doing it? Uh a lot of years. I, um, I know. I mean, the bar golf renovations started in 2012. Oh, I, I assumed and, it was but, actually earlier. Before than that, that, he was with another company. And yeah. Before that, he built uh, a couple of the courses up at Crystal Springs up in Vernon Valley. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Oh, yeah. So I knew he was around for a long time. Yeah. I've known the name and I've known, you know, I've certainly met Rich a couple mm -hmm. of times and uh, right. has a phenomenal reputation. So obviously, it's still fairly competitive. Oh yeah, for what you guys are doing, right? But you had said you're booked out to 2028. So well, not we got job. We're booking you're, jobs. You're booking jobs we're until booking 2028. Jobs. Yeah, which is, I mean, how many it, jobs can you do a year? Um, a lot. It's a lot. I mean, yeah. we're we're constantly looking for uh, yeah. project managers, um, and you know the 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 skilled and the and the labor, the skilled guys are running these fusion machines and equipment operators. Yeah, and the laborers. Uh, that's been uh, uh, very. Uh, not hard to find, but um, but we've, we got a nice pipeline. It's been challenging. Five years, yeah. Um, but it, but it's been it's been the guy to to manage the the project, who's going to be away for three weeks, right? From 
right. family right. home or whatever. And yeah. every third weekend going home for four days and then coming back where the, and, and some of these jobs like uh, Mira Vista down in Fort Worth is going to be five to six months wow. because it's going to be a renovation project. So yeah, yeah. we can't, it's going to be kind of, kind of, we, yeah. we got to follow the renovation team and, and no one only can, you know, can do what wow. we can. Well, I'm encouraged by the fact that you see a, uh, you know, the boom is still growing. So maybe I'll not retire quite yet. Maybe, nah, I was, maybe I'll, I'm not, I'm maybe, not. Maybe, well, you're young. You're still a young man. Yeah, well, I mean, and, uh, but you've been doing this for a long time now, but this has got to be a whole different lifestyle for you now. All it is. You're traveling a lot. Yeah. It's, and yeah. I'm traveling. And this is really the first time in your career that you've done this kind of traveling. Yeah. I, except for the golf show. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Which is not traveling. That's, you know, and, and this all was, um, you know, I, we knew my wife was retiring as a school as a guidance counselor in the yeah. school district. Yeah. Um, this popped up when I was kids are out of the house. The kids are out of the house. This popped up. I was in, uh, volunteering at the U.S. Amateur at Ridgewood. Yeah. And Brian Chapin was there, who he had yeah. worked there before, and him and I, and I had called on him when he was at Paramount. Yeah. And uh, I said, hey, you know, how's things going down at Rolling yeah. Greens? He goes, oh, I'm leaving there. I'm just going to work with Rich. I'm like, really? He goes, yeah, we're starting irrigation division. I'm like, hello. <laughs> oh so, yeah hey i know somebody might be interested <laughs> you know which you know again my plans were a year later denise was going to retire yeah so i essentially just jumped a calendar year there you go and and got got you know on board and here we are well you know i feel kind of like a, a a proud papa having known you since you were this big and and you know spreading chicken shit on fiddler's elbow and complaining about the uh the stench and the dust and all the stuff. And now look at you yeah. all over the country. I mean, yep. uh, I'm quite impressed. And it's really, I, I can't thank you enough for coming down. And I think That's it's my pleasure. I think it's time for a cocktail hour. So uh, Sounds good. I want to thank you and appreciate your time. Uh, obviously, people could find you fairly easy in Labar. Golf irrigation is uh, fairly easy to find. Yes. Uh, so if you have questions, I mean, Rich has all uh, Rich. I call you Rich. I've called you Rich most of your life. Right. But Rick has always been extremely helpful and even helped me out on a little irrigation system in my house that I never followed through with. But uh, someday, maybe one of these days, <laughs> uh, folks, that is the Earthworks podcast. Uh, please uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And and uh, if you do, we'll tell you who's coming up next week. And uh, we always have somebody entertaining and interesting and hopefully informative as uh, I'm over a little overwhelmed. So I think cocktail hours on. Uh, thank, thank you, you my much. friend. Appreciate yeah. it.